increasing the production of U.S. steel and ensuring that more of that product is used in federal construction projects, while also creating more American jobs. For the next few minutes, we'll discuss the Buy America Steel Amendment. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Joining me is Congressman Chip Kravak, Republican from Minnesota. Congressman, welcome to the program. It's good to be here, Robert. Thank so, you. So, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but it would seem to me that when our taxpayer dollars are being used for federal construction projects, especially transportation, roads, bridges, and so forth, it would be made with U.S. steel, right? I, I agree with you. Uh, and it's, this is not a protection it, uh, deal. This, so you're not an this, isolationist? No, not at all. What this does is put our American steel on a level playing field with Brazilian steel, Chinese China, steel, Russia. that subsidize steel. Their government agencies subsidize the production of that steel, and then they ship it over to the United States at a lesser cost. So what you're basically saying is, is that the steel that is being imported here is much, much cheaper than U.S. steel. So that's in the process. Of course, you're going to go with the cheaper product. The cheaper product, but and it's also a lesser quality, in my that's opinion, true. as well. That's true. American steel is the best made steel in the world. And what this does is it puts us on a level playing field with uh, cheap Chinese steel, cheap Brazilian steel that comes into the United States that puts it at a market price. They still have to meet market price, but allows us to have the first dibs, American steel, American workers work, working on American projects. Now, Congressman, uh, some folks would say, you know what, the market needs to play itself out. And if, in fact, the market is saying that foreign steel is may, may not be a better quality, but if it's cheaper, then clearly the market is saying that we need to go with cheaper steel. What do you say to that? Well, I see that that's protectionism in reverse. Uh, again, this is subsidized steels by the subsidized governments. And our steel is uh, actually at a market rate because we don't subsidize our steel. So our steel would be able to go to American projects. And uh, I think that's, that's what we have to Define do. Define American projects. What does that mean specifically? Uh, the federal, uh, uh, all the federal projects that are working in the United infrastructure projects, that is going to be you know, American projects uh, and all this does, and remember, this bill, all it allows us is that American steel meets the market price. Now, market price is actually set by China. And our steel would still have to meet the market price, but it gives American workers that first dib on American projects. And this is an amendment uh, in the U.S. House of Congress. What is the That's likelihood true. that this would actually be passed and signed into law? I have very good chance. It was overwhelmingly uh, supportive in the committee. It's gone. It will go on the floor. It's in the transportation bill right now. We need to get a transportation bill out, uh, out as well because this is long-term uh, projects for America. Do you believe that it has strong bipartisan support? The transportation bill? Yes. Uh, the transportation bill has issues right now. I have to be honest with well, you. Well, that's the reason why I asked the question, because yeah. with recent news out there, with all due respect to you and your colleagues, it seems like more and more people are turning on the television set, opening up their newspapers. All they hear is, is, is partisanship. Yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate, because we need to get, uh, this transportation bill is good for America. Uh, unions are behind it. Uh, we need to have long-term commitment and stability for contractors to be able to buy uh, infrastructure project or equipment to hire those new workers. Uh, they're not going to be able to do it on a two-month bill. It has to be a five-year bill. It, at, you know, when I'm talking to these contractors, when I'm talking to DOTs, um, that's what they're telling us. DOT meaning the Department, Department of Transportation. Transportation. About how many jobs do you think will be created or saved if, in fact, this bill was signed into law? I couldn't, I don't have the calculations okay. on that. But I can tell you what I'm hearing from um, contractors and what I'm hearing from Department of Transportation at the states, they need a long-term bill. Well, and I think you, you touched upon something that's very important. we got about 45 seconds left. It's not just the steel industry. It's the ripple effect of oh, yeah. all of the sub contractors out there that could benefit for something like this? Well, yes, not only that, for every mining job in the U.S. steel, uh, uh, in the US steel uh, manufacturing is 2.5 ancillary jobs associated with it. So this has a huge ripple, especially in my district, but also down the line as well. We have about 20 seconds left, Congressman. Very quickly, do you think this is going to be passed uh, this spring, this summer? Very quickly, 15 seconds. I, I think we will have a transportation bill within, within this year. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. And, of course, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care.